Today we're here in the Olympic Mountains and we're going to scout for some new roads with the 2024 Subaru Crosstrack Wilderness. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. This is the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness. The Wilderness being the most capable version you can buy of the Crosstrek from the factory. This is off-road ready in a number of ways. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Now this is of course the vehicle that I did film in Utah at the National Press Launch. And this is a great car. I drove it from Utah all the way back to Seattle, really enjoyed the drive. Now, why do I have this vehicle for so long? Well, Subaru is loaning it to Driving Sports TV for about six months, so we can experience it in a variety of conditions and in a variety of climates. Because yeah, we're gonna do some snow testing with this when the snow finally falls. But right now, it's right before Thanksgiving. It's a beautiful day in the Pacific Northwest. And I decided that I kinda wanted to scout some roads. And there's a whole bunch of roads out there that I have not yet explored. Because we haven't had snow yet, now's the time to do it before it's too late. Um, also, we haven't had too many windstorms through here, which we do normally get this time of year. Uh, so the roads should be passable. Hopefully, we'll see. So today you're riding along with me as I'm scouting for new roads here in the Olympic Mountains on the Washington Peninsula. But before we head out, let's review all of the key features of this 2024 Crosstrek Wilderness. Under the hood is Subaru's trademark 2.5 liter boxer motor. It produces a peak 182 horsepower and 176 pound-feet of torque. The only transmission option is a continuously variable unit with a revised 411 final drive. Subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive is standard, and here it's enhanced with dual X mode for snow or deep mud conditions. Wheels are 17-inch alloys. Tires are Yokohama Geolanders. This is a mild all-terrain version of the tire. They are also peak rated for snow. Ground clearance has been increased over the standard Crosstrek up to 9.3 inches. The suspension setup is also exclusive to the Wilderness. The front and rear bumpers are designed for better clearance. Approach increases to 20 degrees, departure to 33. Breakover is now 21.1 degrees. Price as you see it here with optional Alpine green paint and the Harman Kardon sound system, $35,995 US dollars, including destination. For today's adventure, I have three goals. Number one, explore a possible loop off Forest Road 2230. That looks like it'll be very challenging if it's even accessible. Number two, I'm gonna poke around the Oxbow Campground to see if there's any drivable areas near the Skycomish River's South Fork. And finally, number three, I wanna see if the Denny All Hill is accessible. I tried to drive it last year in my free time, but there were just too many trees. That is off Forest Road 200 and 250. If even one of these pans out, I will feel this is a pretty good day. If none of them pan out, well, you know what? We're just gonna finish this episode up at the High Steel Bridge, uh, which is over there somewhere. Now that we've covered all the details, time to head out. Here we are back in the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness. And spoiler alert, I really like this car. If you watched my video where I drove across the country, even my initial review, there's a lot of good things about this vehicle. Every once in a while, a manufacturer really just kind of gets all the planets in alignment. And I think with this particular vehicle, Subaru has done just that. It's fun on pavement. It's fun on gravel. It's even fun doing challenging off-road conditions, which is why I picked this vehicle for scouting today. Also, I know one of the big issues with the Olympic Mountains out here is really that a lot of trails get overgrown. So being smaller is a huge advantage here in the Olympics. And that's true, actually, if you go anywhere. I've done some trails up in the uh, Cascades off of I-90, which is a very, very busy off-road area. And I've hit some trails where the brushes are really tight. Just look at my, what was it? It was a Range Rover review from a few years ago. It might've caused some paint damage on that episode from all the shrubs rubbing against it, but that was fun. And there's hang gliding. So go look that one up on our YouTube channel. I'm not gonna go into all the details of this car. I have multiple reviews where I already do that. I'm just gonna be driving in normal iDrive. There's no reason to put it into sport. And I'm just gonna keep this in drive. I'm not gonna do manual unless something demands it. 
Now the map that I have up is not Apple Maps or Google. I'm actually using OnX Mapping and they are not a sponsor of this video. Wouldn't mind it if they were, but they are not. <laughs> I actually use OnX in combination with Garmin's system. Garmin has a really good app and really good web maps, but they don't have an Apple CarPlay thing. If they had an Apple CarPlay thing, I'd probably just use that. I have actually pre-plotted my course using my Garmin app. So I have a number of different waypoints and these are all offline maps. I don't have to have any data connection. I've also pre-downloaded all of the data stuff for OnX. So I have multiple maps. Usually when going into areas like this, never rely 100% on one map. Always have a couple with downloads. Uh, and then if I only do have one, I'm gonna use something like my Garmin. Uh, I do have a satellite transponder, but um, obviously newest iPhones will also do satellite in the event of emergency. Speaking of emergency, I do have some equipment with me. Nothing too major. I'm not expecting like rock climbing or anything too extreme. This is really a scouting trip, uh, but I did bring an air compressor, uh, an ax, a small saw, oh, and trimmers in case there's a branch in the way. Uh, those are basically what I bring on most of my outings. Uh, you don't see them in the video because usually I don't need them, <laughs> but if I need them, you'll see them. Anyway, enough talking, let's start driving. So a lot of the roads today are gonna be just like this, a potholed logging road. It's just, that's what we got here. <laughs> um, but you know, it's, it's gonna be varied conditions and obviously these are forest roads. These are not maintained like a regular road. If a tree falls down and blocks the road around a tight corner in a dangerous location, yeah, there's no guarantee that anybody's gonna see that before I do. And there's definitely no guarantee anybody's gonna fix it before I do. So we always have to be really cautious. And now it is November when I'm filming this, it's right before Thanksgiving. This video will probably be released after Thanksgiving. This is about the time of year where we start to get all the wind storms. We had a little bit of wind two weeks ago. Usually the first wind storm will down a lot of trees, uh, but I think it was kind of a mild storm. I, I, we'll find out, right? I, I have no idea what this is gonna look like. Now that road will take me to High Steel Bridge, which is not where we're going today, unless of course this all doesn't pan out. High Steel Bridge is really cool though. It's like the second tallest steel bridge, span bridge in the U.S. or something, and it's in the middle of nowhere. It was originally a train trestle that was then changed into uh, a road, and people just basically go out there now just to uh, get the view and to check it out. And there is actually are still some logging operations on the other side, I guess. It still does have commercial purpose. So one of the biggest enemies, hey look, I'm on pavement again so weird. You're like, pave, dirt, pave, dirt. The biggest enemy of an off-roader out here are two things, gates and logs. Uh, they will put up lots of gates, lots of logs. And as somebody who owns property myself, I get it. I really get it. Because once you start letting people in, they can either start to ruin the ecosystem because you have so many people stuff. So it sucks. I get it. Hopefully, we can avoid some of those gates today and actually get into some of these areas. I mean, because, you know, this is public land in many cases. Now this is actually, uh, let's talk about that actually. <laughs> this in the Northwest isn't all necessarily public land. Um, some of it is privately managed, uh, but it is forest and it is managed forest. So you might see some clear cuts and those clear cuts um, are going to be replanted. It's all required that they replant within a specific set of time. Uh, and then so you'll see basically different ages of forests. like right here. We have a young replant down here. We have some older uh, trees behind it. And this is just a cycle that we do over and over and over in Washington State. Lumber is a huge industry here. Uh, and so this is how we manage our forests. And you know, they make some mistakes, but for the most part, they try to keep a very healthy forest. Okay, and it just kind of blows my mind that I'm back on pavement again. You know, we just had two miles of dirt and now we're on asphalt. It's just so weird. <laughs> so the first loop, I think it's actually coming up here. Um, I didn't actually download my map data into on X, like my routes. Uh, they're all here in my Garmin app. Yeah, and this coming up here is our first left much easier to get to than I thought. This might be a very quick video. 
If it's successful, I don't mind quick. But uh, yeah, I just don't want it to be lame. I want a good video. I'm sure you want a good video too. Okay, here's our first lap. Okay. Into the unknown as we first attempt the loop to see if this is actually a loop. Now that I'm heading into the unknown, <laughs> I am using tracks. Now, tracks allow me to see where I've been, which is really important uh, because it's easy to get twisted up here in the woods. You can be like, have I already been down that road? Uh, with breadcrumbs or tracks, you will know for sure because I just look at the map and go, oh, I've already done that road. I need to take a left there, something like that. Now you can do tracks either on uh, the Garmin app uh, or on X. And again, nice thing about on X is that it actually has a CarPlay app. So I can watch my tracks right on the screen here. I don't have to pick up my mobile device. I have to be careful with these potholes because yeah, most of them are you know, not so bad. You can hit them at speed, but you find one that is deeper than you expect and sharper on the edges and uh, yeah, spare tire time. And we only have a space saver spare in this vehicle, which is still better than a repair kit. <laughs> I am happy to have a spare. Well, it looks like we got one tree down here. In addition to tools that I bring out here, I uh, also want to make sure that you always bring water and snacks. Because obviously, if you have any issues and you find yourself at the bottom of the ravine and you're waiting for a rescue, then uh, yeah. Sometimes it's good to eat some food while you're waiting because it might be a while out here, even with a satellite communicator. So I got a branch in the road here. I don't have it mapped out here, but in my Garmin app, I can take a look at what I pre-mapped out. So if I go to the left, it'll go around this cliff and bring us out to the other side, eventually according to the map but it is not the course that I actually mapped. So I'm gonna stick to my course for right now and take a right here. See, in my head, I was like, oh, I'm gonna take a left there, but I checked my map. So always check your maps. This road is already a lot smaller than the last road we were on. Love these trees, this is really cool. Uh, speaking of trees, we do have some down trees here, but it looks like somebody has been through. So hopefully, we don't have anything too big. Oh, there's another truck up here anyway. Clearly there's people out here. On some videos, you might see me totally hauling down forest roads. Now, that is usually where I get good line of sight and it's not one of these blind corners. Blind corners, I'm always gonna be driving fairly cautiously. Um, and I would recommend you do too. <laughs> um, I have been on some of these windy roads in the middle of nowhere and come to an absolute landslide like no road around the corner no warning so you got to be careful with that and obviously slamming on your brakes in the woods you need a lot more stopping distance because of the gravel on a trip like this i am keeping my traction control on um, there's just no reason to turn it off i'm not trying to make time here i'm not trying to slide through the corners uh, because we have severe edges on both sides <laughs> Like right here, that's a drop of about 30 feet. That's a drop of about 20 feet. Let's not, let's not have problems, right? In about two to three weeks, this will be covered with snow and this will probably be impassable because uh, they do not plow these roads, of course. This road is really nice, very smooth. This actually would be like an epic rally road. And speaking of that, they actually did run the WRC uh, stages here back in the 80s, back when the Olympus rally was, a th well, it's still a thing, but back when it was part of the WRC calendar. Uh, and ever since it's left, people have been trying to get it back. Uh, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Combination environmental uh, and also like the will of local politics. It's just, it's not a thing right now. This is pretty. Another nice thing about maps is I can kind of get a gist of what's coming up. We have a really sharp turn coming up and it's kind of nice to know that in advance. That's also a really nice thing about this cross track. I do like to have this massive display 
in environments like this. When I'm using the maps critically, uh, it's just something that's really nice to have a great view of. Ooh. Okay, got a little landslide situation here, but we it's clear. Hello. I also want to point out the deja vu-ness of this. Is that a word? <laughs> uh, a lot of these corners I come around and I'm like, oh, I've been here before. But then I keep driving and it's like, oh, no, I haven't. They just all look the same. Uh, and yeah, it's spectacular out here in the Northwest, but you know, these shelf roads, they do kind of look the same because they're all just surrounded by the same kind of mountains. They're all part of the same range. They're all gonna have the same character. And of course, the Forest Service is pretty consistent in how they build them. So yeah, you're gonna get deja vu. That's again, underlining why you need to have breadcrumbs. Even if you feel you have great direction out here, it can really mess you up. I think we're going to be coming out pretty soon. I don't know. Here's that sharp turn where we're going to go around a peak, I think. And we are climbing very quickly. I don't know what we're at now height-wise, uh, but we're probably, well, actually, you know what? Let's stop for a moment. Height-wise, we are currently at, my Garmin actually has elevation. Uh, <coughs> huh, we're currently at 1,736 feet. So that's, that's a quick climb because I started this adventure at like 100 feet over sea level. those logs. Watch that cliff. Yowza, we are climbing fast. More rocks, boulders. So I was thinking about making tracks uh, the downloadable um, GPS coordinates of these adventures available on the Driving Sports website. Anybody interested in that? If so, post a comment below. Let's uh, park and see what we got here. Ooh, we got a little turn off here. Where did that go? That looks like it's gonna go off a cliff. Let's send the drone up and see what we got. That little road didn't really go anywhere, so continuing on up and around the cliff. Wow, this is cool. I'm so glad I had a chance to do this today before the weather really goes south here. Some of these shelves are really narrow. Yeah, we're just going to tiptoe around here, I think. Wow. Holy moly. Get a shot of that. And over here, we have a drop. And a mattress, apparently. Huh, nature is beautiful. So we're about halfway through our tracks right now. Let's continue on and see if this goes through. If not, at least there's some spots where I can back up and around. That, another little side forest adventure. So there is a trail here and it looks like it's a shortcut, but that looks way too rough. And I can't do that. Continuing on. You know, the nice thing about all these trees is that if I do slide off the cliff, they will catch me. I mean, it might take 20 feet of sliding, but it'll eventually catch me. Woods. So this road is pretty cool, but so far it's not really a challenge. It's just interesting. It's not hard. Like this is any, I could drive a Camry up here. It would be fine. 
well, at least until I hit a pothole and I got a flat. But you know, side wall aside, uh, this is not a stress for this vehicle. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this route. I expect it'll just be more of the same. And then we'll continue on to the next thing to see if it's gonna be a little bit harder. As I'm continuing down the road, it's starting to get more enclosed. The road's a little narrower and there's more trees. Um, hopefully we're still gonna be able to get all the way though because I'm like 90% of the, of the loop at this point. I think we'll be fine, we'll, we should be fine. Oh boy. We are getting lower though, so that's I guess good. Still very high though. We're still at about 2,600 feet roughly. It always occurs to me that when you have all these trees that have recently fallen, even though somebody's been through and bucked them, that is cut them, uh, cut holes through them, they're still pretty unstable. Like I do not trust these trees at all. Oh, hey, it's getting thick in here. That's why I'm glad I didn't bring the sequoia out here. We got, oh, a rock exposure. Oh, what do we have here? Wow, that's a drop. Oh boy, this is getting narrow. Okay, we got, that's recently bucked. Somebody just cut that. Somebody must have been through this weekend. Luckily, we have no winds today, so the chances of additional fall are pretty low. This road is not looking like a lot of people drive on it. Ooh, that's cool. Out in the distance there. My house is out there somewhere. <laughs> got some rocks and some trees. Let's not bump that tree. Oh, that's going to scratch the paint. Okay. This doesn't look right. This is just getting worse and this is supposed to be a main line. Wow. Okay, this is cool and uh, I'm sure it'll be challenging ahead, but I'm noticing on my map here I actually did not go the way I was supposed to. I was supposed to take a right back there, uh, which will then loop me back to the main road. This dead ends somewhere up there. Uh, but this road is very, very rough, and I know I'm not gonna get very far. So with that, I think I'm gonna back up and go the other way. Ah, prepare to be amazed with the art of the 20 point turn. bright sun right in the way and there's a cliff right there but I think we got enough swing here to get a couple inches yeah we'll be fine just need a couple inches that's all it takes see again why it's so good to have a small vehicle can you imagine doing this in a sequoia yeah not an option <laughs> Okay, back the way we came. Okay. So here's the deal. Onyx shows that the loop actually reconnects back to the main line. 
Garmin does not. Garmin shows that it dead ends up at the peak. Uh, so this is a big question mark for me at this point. I would just send my drone up, but the trees are too thick to really get a good read on the road conditions. So what do I do in this case? It's not the fun option, but what I'm gonna do is actually backtrack this entire course and then start to go up the other side. And the reason for doing that instead of just pushing through is that road was getting very narrow and very rough. Um, if I did get stuck on a precarious situation and I needed to back out, that's extremely dangerous. So what I need to do is find out if it goes all the way through. If it does, then even if it gets difficult, I have no problem pressing forward. Likewise, if there's turnaround points, again, not a big deal. But today is all about exploration of the unknown. It's not about taking undue risks. So I'm hopping back in and we'll pick this back up on the other side. So far, I've averaged 25.7 MPGs, which is actually pretty good. And the reason for that is it hasn't been really that challenging. As far as the car is concerned, it's just been driving on a road at about 30 miles an hour with very little stopping. So not bad, actually. <laughs> Now, granted, if we did start like climbing challenging conditions, those MPGs would go out the window very quickly. Now, I have complained about the cross truck wilderness not having an available front camera, and I still contend it should have one. In some of the new trucks, which have these massive hoods, specifically, I was like driving the Sequoia recently, it's so big you can't see anything for about 40 feet away from the truck in the front. This one, it's so small, I only lose a few feet. And so it makes it easier to place the tires appropriately. So you might be asking, why am I not turning on X mode? And it's because you only really turn on X mode when you need it. Here, regular traction control with symmetrical all wheel drive is doing just fine. In fact, if everything goes according to plan today, probably won't need X mode at all. Is this an off-roady park? It is. I want to get going onto that second part of the loop, but I can always have a little bit of fun, right? Let me take a look what's on the other side. Oh, it's just a flat top. Okay. I mean, obviously, <laughs> we have our own off-road courses. I don't need to do this, but I am compelled to do it. <laughs> This should be no problem for this vehicle. And here I actually will, um, actually let's not do X mode. Let's just see if we get up without X mode first. Slow throttle. Whoop, nope, I need that wheel braking to be a little bit more intense. Try it with just, oh, 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 no X mode. Can we get it? Oh yeah. Man, this is tough. Can it do it? It's detecting an obstacle. Come on, we got this. Okay, this is actually where our camera might be useful. Is it working? It is. I don't want to thunk down on top of the brake over, so I'm being really cautious with my approach. What? Brake over, how we doing? Oh, made it. <laughs> For the sake of science, I think we need to do that again. And this time I'm going to do X mode snow and dirt. And we'll see how much more aggressive that wheel braking is. Oh. It is much better. So the snow dirt X mode is the same X mode that is on all Subarus that have X mode. Uh, the enhanced X mode that's on this wilderness is deep snow and mud, but we didn't really need that much wheel spin because that will actually increase wheel spin. Uh, this one, we just needed more power distribution than the standard symmetrical all wheel drive provides. Okay, on we go. So the other side of our loop should be on the left right up here. Oh, where's the road? There, 2351. Looks like it's a road. So we're gonna be following Rock Creek here. 
here it looks like. This is actually where breadcrumbs really are useful because I can see on the map where I had to turn around and I know how far I need to go before I've hit that point. So it'll give me a good indication as to, you know, even if I do end up turning around here, how much more is left over to make up. It's very wet, mushy, got moss all over the trees, quite pretty. So Pacific Northwest going on here. Oop. Oh, that's a deep one. So far, I am not regretting taking this vehicle over my Ranger, uh, mostly because of the turnaround radius. My Ranger is a little on the long side. Ooh, lots of trees here. Lots of trees down. Clearly, I have made the decision here to uh, complete the loop if I can, instead of doing the other items on the wish list for today. But I think that if I get this completed, that'll be one thing I can check off, and then we can come back again on a future episode to go do the other things. Okay, we got a branch in the road here. Which way do I go? Both of which have tracks on them, so that's a good sign means somebody's been down here. So I should go left, right? We'll kind of scamper around and maybe reconnect. It's part of a whole series of roads, but I want to make this loop complete. Oh joy, more puddles. So many puddles. Oof. There's a big boy. Let's make sure we don't hydrolock. Okay, yeah, we're good. I mean, you would assume the puddle's only a few inches deep, but you never actually know. And it's so snug in here. These puddles are so deep. If you haven't watched all my videos, I did a video with the Subaru Forester last year. It was called Triple Thread. And in it, I actually weighed with the Forester up to the front badge. And that is kind of like my personal guideline for how deep is too deep. Obviously these are just puddles, not a big deal. But like, you know, if there was a water crossing, I'd be willing to go, you know, up to the badge, but you can't have any backwash. So you need to keep like a steady bow wave ahead of you if you're gonna do that. So that's an old dead road there. And now we're climbing up on a road that's barely maintained, but it does look like somebody has trimmed through here. Uh, and based on the cuts that I'm seeing, it looks like they probably trimmed about the same time that they did on the other side. So somebody might have come all the way through this, uh, trimming it up. So we might, we might be, this might work out well. And even if it means I had to forfeit my other possible adventures today, uh, this was the big one. And uh, if we can complete this, I will definitely be satisfied. And even if we don't complete it, then we'll know. Oh, what do we have here? Big pile of rocks on the left. Looks like some people partied here. Always amazes me when, uh, whoa, that's a little off camber. Uh, it always amazes me when driving like, you know, hours into the woods and then you find a spot where clearly there's been a rave. <laughs> it's just like, what? <laughs> Who gave directions for this party? Ooh, trees across the road, but they are high enough. I can go under them, I think. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. So is this adventure so far, you know, could I have done it with the Tucson that I drove just a couple weeks ago? Probably not. That puddle that I hit really hard, I didn't bottom out with this car, but I guarantee I would have bottomed out with the Tucson. Are we still on the right path? Yeah, we are. So Rock Peak is right ahead of us. This is our back end loop and this is our first loop. So we only have this squiggly to reconnect. And the road is starting to look a lot like the road was on the other side. We might have a lot of exposures, but that's okay. 
as long as the road goes through and there continues to be turnouts, we'll be fine. And uh, there are turnouts technically, but they ain't big. Getting pretty challenging, actually. I mean, nothing really too hard for the cross check, obviously, but uh, I just hope it doesn't get really bad. Because <laughs> I'd like this thing to be successful, you know? We aren't really stressing the all wheel drive system, although all wheel drive, I think, has been pretty necessary in a couple small segments. The confidence that I'm getting with this vehicle, there's, there's no slipping, there's no issue. It's, it just works. And it's small, yay! Especially going under these trees. Hello, trees. Yeah, now it's getting really, yeah, we're hitting branches, clearly. As long as we don't hit rocks. Although here I have to pick branch or rock. I'm definitely picking the branch. So we're getting pretty close to where we were originally connected. I gotta be careful looking down while I'm driving ahead because rocks will jump out at you. I'm gonna turn those seat warmers off. Don't need those. I'm getting warm plenty myself. There's a nice turnaround. Always good to note where the turnarounds are because you might need them. Now let's check this map. How close are we? We're really close. Oh, we got an exposure up here. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, what do we have here? Hmm. Okay, well, I do have a saw and an axe, but this fell recently, and I'm a little concerned about more stuff falling down. In fact, the trees are grown in very tight past here, so I'm thinking not a lot of people have been up recently. I'm gonna go ahead and call it because today is not the can we get through it. We have other adventures where we'll be doing that. But I think as far as scouting and this kind of a trip, the Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness is an excellent little rig. It gets pretty good gas mileage considering what we're doing today. Also, it's fun to drive, super comfortable. That big screen is really good with maps. Had a lot of fun. Thanks for coming along with me. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share videos. Make them for you. Hope you enjoy them. If you want to see more scouting adventures like this, post a comment below. And uh, maybe we'll do one real soon. Now I just got to get down. Where was that turnaround again?